Okay, in this video, we're going to take a look at uh, how you can use Oracle Apex and ORDS to ingest an XML file in binary form, save it into an XML type, uh, and then really use the information in its native form through, through queries uh, inside the autonomous database. Uh, this is the example XML file we'll be using for today. Uh, and to start with, we're going to go into our SQL workshop and uh, we're going to create a table. Uh, it's going to be called stage.xml. Uh, a trigger, and, and then we'll enable our trigger uh, to store this information. You'll notice here that we are going to use the XML type um, in our table uh, to store the XML incoming. All right, once that's in place, now we're going to go ahead and create our REST service, our basically our, our post. Um, method that will enable us to consume the XML in binary form. So we'll create our module. Now we're going to create our template. And then we'll create our post method. So we're going to set this to post. Uh, one of the things we need to do is set the mime types here, and uh, we th use those as our accepted mime types. Uh, now we're going to go back and look at some code. So uh, to consume uh, this particular XML as binary, uh, one of the things we're going to do is set up a blob variable. Um, we're going to pass in the binary XML into that blob. Uh, we're going to get the length, you know, to start with and make sure that it's not null. Uh, next, we're going to create a temporary blob. Uh, that's v underscore XML. And then we're going to essentially parse through the blob line by line uh, with buffer links uh, that are acceptable in Apex. Uh, and as we read the line of XML, we're going to cast it to a var car and put it in our temporary clob. Uh, once that is complete, we will insert into our XML or our stage that underscore XML uh, with our XML type that we just created. Uh, and then we will return a status uh, back um, with information like you know, the length of the blob received and the clob conversion and stuff like that. Let's go ahead and grab this code. And we'll drop it in. All right, well with that, I'm gonna go ahead up here and I'm gonna copy my endpoint for the post method. Um, I do have videos on how to set up Postman that you can watch for this sort of thing. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and put our endpoint in here and we're going to select uh, and upload our first of two XML files. So our first one went in. We can see the row ID there uh, and the bits that it converted. Now let's put our second one in. All right. Now we're going to go back into our SQL workshop. Go ahead and select star from that table. And we should see uh, what you see here, which is we have our XML column. We have the XML in the database there. And uh, we have two records. So at first glance, this may be like, man, how on earth do I access the data inside of this? Uh, so what we're going to do next is show you a few sample queries. Uh, the syntax that makes it super easy to query this or create views that then you can use in your Apex apps or your, your custom development. All right, our first view that we're going to look at, um, you see in our XML, we have this X message header tag right here, and we have a number of uh, tags underneath that with information. So we're going to create a view that will access this segment of the XML itself. So go here. Uh, this is the, the view, what it looks like to create. Essentially, you pass in the X path um, to pull out the message header information. And once the view is created, we can query it. And you can see how easy it is to get that information from within the XML tags uh, to use in our application. All right, so let's do a little bit more complex query next. Uh, if we look at our XML, um, you're going to see that there are a number of repeating elements as you go down. Invoice, and then you have something called extended attributes uh, here as well. So this next query is going to really look uh, for a way to pull out the catalog, there's something called catalog ID. All right. uh, it's, 
takes the name inside of an extended attribute, and it should have a value of 78. So what we're going to do is write a query that's going to pull uh, information from our order header. So that's going to be uh, all of the order header information right here. But also, uh, when we're going to pull out the specific value of the catalog ID uh, into a column. So go ahead and create our view. We can go here and run our query. And you'll see here that the catalog ID uh, of 78 came out. So there's really a lot of stuff you can do with this query language in XPath to formulate the tables as you need uh, for your application based on the XML syntax. Now the last one we're going to look at is really, um, you saw quite a few extended attributes before down here. Uh, what do you do when you have repeating elements, but you want to see each of those repeating elements uh, as, as if they're their own row tied to a unique ID, maybe a message header or something like that. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and this is the code. Um, in a nutshell, we're going to query the XML document two different times. And uh, we're at first going to get you know, our ID uh, from our table and our message ID, our, our customer order ID, and our OMS order ID, which are all essentially unique identifiers for the XML messages that are coming in each document. Um, and we're going to join that with the um, essentially the extended attributes, uh, name, description, and value. Uh, for all the repeating extended attributes. So let's go ahead and run this, create this view. And we can then query it. And you can see here that it turned each of those repeating elements into a row form, which makes it a little bit easier to work with in, in some applications, depending on what you need to do. Uh, so that was a real quick look on how you can ingest XML in a binary form, uh, save it in the database in the native XML type, and then easily set up views or queries uh, to access the information for your Apex build.